Diesel particulate filters, exhaust gas recirculation, selective catalytic reduction. What exactly is the impact of all of these technologies on the lube oil system for a diesel engine? Let's talk about it. So let's talk about emissions control systems. If you'll remember, we talked about this before, that there is a kind of set of paradigms that we have to talk about when it comes to regulations around both oil systems as well as fuel systems. Now, the oil systems, you know, are governed by API, JSO, and ASEA. So these are all the engine oil specifications. And what they help enable is the emissions regulations. So generally what happens is, let's say with like the Euro 4 or Euro 5, the government sets criteria for emissions regulations, and then the OEMs have to go out and meet those. Part of the OEM strategy to help meet these emissions regulations is going to be the lube oil strategy. And so the lube oil, as we've discussed previously, has to sort of follow the technology. And this is why we get changes to engine oil specs. Now, if we look at these regulations, there are two broad categories where initially we had an emphasis on emission reduction. And in recent years, we've had an emphasis on carbon dioxide reduction. That is to say, improvements in fuel economy. But in that sort of early 2000 to 2012 period, the technologies which enabled emissions reductions is what we're going to be talking about in this video. So let's talk about emissions control and what it's trying to achieve. So if you were to talk about the, the two main categories, it's really particulate matter and NOx is, is what we're after. Now the problem with these is that they run counter to each other. So if I increase the combustion temperature in the engine, I get a reduction in the amount of particulate matter, but NOx increases. Now intuitively, why does particulate matter decrease? Well, think about soot, right? Which is the main form of particulate matter, which is generated by uh, combustion. P soot is generally uncombusted fuel products or fuel and oil products. And we get these if we have incomplete combustion. So you can imagine that the higher the combustion temperature, the more, the larger percentage of fuel I'm going to burn therefore the less soot I will have in the exhaust. Unfortunately, that runs counter to everything that we know about NOx production. Now, why is it that we care about particulate matter and NOx? Why are these bad? Well, we can think of these on a couple of dimensions. There is the environmental concern, there is the health and safety concern, and then you have engine durability concerns. So as an example, if we took environmental concerns, um, NOx, it has a positive effect on the greenhouse effect. So NOx in the atmosphere acts as kind of an insulating layer, specifically because it helps in the production of ozone, um, which traps infrared light. Then we've also got the formation of nitric acids. So in the same way that sulfur compounds can make their way into the atmosphere and form acid rain, right, because they form a weak uh, sulfuric acid, then nitric acid can also make its way into the atmosphere as well. Now on particulate matter, we are concerned with particulate matter. It seems kind of obvious to say this, but particulate matter up in the air can produce smog um, and is just generally bad for the environment, right? It's a, it's a pollutant. On the health side of things, NOx has been related to asthma, right? It also while it's in the air, can react with other organic pump compounds to form uh, toxic compounds. And it f has the production of ozone as well, which is generally not good for health and uh, can result in some changes to DNA. On the particulate matter side, we know that breathing in particulates causes respiratory problems, right? And then on the durability side, you, you know, NOx, because of its production of acids, can run you into issues of corrosion and of course, particulate matter, particularly soot, uh, build up in the engines. As it agglomerates, it forms abrasive particles and that results in excessive wear. So in general, we can be confident in saying that both NOx and particulate matter are generally bad on many, many dimensions. Okay, so 
Now that we've got that under control, let's talk about some of the strategies that have been used. So as we progressed, let's say in the diesel engine specs from CG through to uh, CJ and now CK4, it's an exercise in us reducing the allowable NOx and particulate matter each time. So if you were to put some dates to those, that runs from the mid 1990s through to about 2010. One thing that happened to ha had to happen was that the OEMs had to work in conjunction with the oil and fuel manufacturers. And what we had was changes in piston design, changes to combustion control, exhaust gas recirculation, and then you had SCRs and DPFs. And that was accompanied by a move to this ultra low sulfur diesel. Right? So all of these things together is what helps us bring all of these emissions under control. And yeah, we, we're seeing rapid improvements. The amount of emissions coming out of the tailpipe is vastly less now than it was 20 years ago. So let's consider, for example, the changes that were made to piston design and the impact that that has on lubricants. So one thing that the OEMs have started, well, have been doing for a long time now, since the sort of mid nineties, is tightening up all the tolerances, specifically between uh, the piston and the cylinder at the top land. Right, so they've reduced that, uh, that, that sort of volume there. They've also reduced the height of the top land and improved the undercrown cooling. So remember, underneath the piston crown, you're generally firing oil into the bottom of that to help cool it. The reason you need to do that is combustion chambers in the, in the uh, combustion chamber temperatures often exceed the melting point of aluminium. So if you're not doing anything to cool the underside of the piston, it, theoretically it would melt. Now, what does this mean? If we have a tighter piston to cylinder clearance, that's going to result in potentially um, more contact events between the piston and the liner. When we reduce the top land height, we're going to increase the temperature in the top ring groove, right? Because it's closer to, to the combustion chamber. And finally, if we improve the underground cooling, then we are going to have higher oil, te oil temperatures because you're removing more heat through into the oil system. That has to be distributed through all the oil that eventually ends up in the sump. Now, if we have higher contact between the piston and the liner, that's going to result in increased wear. If we increase the temperature in the top ring groove, that runs the risk of increased deposits in those ring grooves. Potentially, you can end up with stuck rings as well, right? And if you have ring sticking, then generally you have higher oil consumption because there's more blow by. Um, the other thing that you can also get is a little bit more wear. With higher oil temperatures, we expect shorter oil life, right? Because higher temperatures mean more oxidation. So these are all the things that are impacting the lubricant as a result of changes to piston design and where we have to improve the lubricants. So where there is the potential for increased wear, we need to you know, supplement that with a with an anti-wear pack. Where we look like we're going to have increased deposits, we need to look at the detergent uh, dispersant formulation. And where there's shorter oil life, we have to move to higher quality base stocks and better antioxidant packages. Now this here is uh, what we call an exhaust gas recirculation valve, and it's part of the one of the other technologies that we've been using. Now. The exhaust gas recirculation valve, I'll just show it uh, very briefly in the closed and open positions, but is part of an entire EGR system, which basically takes a, a percentage of the exhaust air and sends it back into the intake. Now, you wouldn't want to do that at um, exhaust temperatures, so it needs to go through an EGR cooler first. The whole point of doing this is that, you know, in combustion, we are reacting fuel with oxygen. So we should expect that in the exhaust gas, or that the exhaust, exhaust gas will have a lower concentration of oxygen than air does. So by putting that uh, small amount of air back into the intake, we are lowering the oxygen concentration right, of the inlet air. And lower oxygen concentrations are one of the techniques that have enabled us to reduce uh, NOx quantities in combustion. Now, the problem with this 
is that it firstly dilutes the air to fuel ratio, right? Uh, and more specifically, it, it dilutes the oxygen to fuel ratio. It also then lowers the combustion temperatures because, you know, we have less oxygen. Now, that, remember, plays in favour of reducing NOx. So if we lower the combustion temperature, we're going to have less NOx. However, that does mean more acid and more particulate matter in the form of soot. So that's how we pay the price. So how do we combat acids? Well, it's usually through TBN additives, so that's the detergent or overbased detergent. And how do we combat soot? Is through the use of dispersants. All right, now let's look at the next system, which is uh, something that might be a little bit familiar to you, but by different names. So when we have NOx, NOx is a generic term for all kinds of nitrogen and oxygen compounds, right? So there's NO2, there's NO, N2O, NO3. There are a number of different combinations that nitrogen and oxygen can exist in. So here I'm showing NO2 and NO. Now, as it happens, if we react these with a urea molecule, then it can help reduce the amount of NOx that ends up at the end of the tailpipe. Now, urea is probably not something that you're familiar with in diesel application, but you may know it by its sort of trademark name, which is AdBlue, right? So if you have uh, a diesel truck, then you're very familiar with the AdBlue system. Now, AdBlue isn't pure urea, it's actually urea which is in aqueous solution, right? So there's water and urea mixed. The cool thing about urea is that it undergoes a hydrolysis hydrolysis reaction. So if you have water, which is present in the aqueous solution, and you add heat, then what you get is the formation of some carbon dioxide. But the thing that we're really interested in is the ammonia. Now, the reason we want ammonia is because ammonia reacts with NOx to form relatively harmless compounds. So we, we get nitrogen and water. Of course, nitrogen makes up the majority of the, the Earth's atmosphere, so we don't worry too much about that. And water, of course, is a natural byproduct. So the, the entire EGR system is a very effective way of reducing NOx. In fact, the amount of NOx that it can reduce is in the order of 75 to 90%. And the advantage of these systems is that you also get a reduction in particulate matter. Now, that sort of seems counterintuitive because this doesn't seem to be doing any kind of filtration, right? But the idea is that there is such a massive reduction in NOx that it enables you to go to a higher combustion temperature, which means that you can reduce the amount of particulate matter. The disadvantage of this system is that it is, you know, another technology and you have to carry another tank on board. So, so basically, there's a sort of like a filter box that you'll see on the exhaust and you have to have a, a point at which to inject the add blue as well. Now, we haven't completed the picture because we also want to try and reduce particulates that are in the exhaust. And generally what you'll see before the, uh, the selective catalytic reducer is a DPF, which is a diesel particulate filter. Now, what these look like on the inside is kind of like a an air filter really, but a rather specialized air filter. So you get exhaust gas coming in one end, it goes through the filter and gets cleaned up. And what is left is the particulate residue. Now, the kind of the downside of that is that you can get the buildup of soot. And this just naturally happens, right? If you have any kind of filter and it's removing solid materials, eventually that filter is going to clog. Now, what happens there is that it can, exert some back pressure on the engine. As that back pressure starts to build up, combustion becomes less efficient and we need to burn off the soot, right? So there are two things there. First of all, it can have an impact on our fuel economy because we need to inject some fuel and get high temperatures to burn off all that ash, turn it into carbon dioxide. But the impact on our lubricant is that it means that we have a limitation on the amount of ash in our oil. So remember, ash forms when metal compounds are burnt. We can't have so many of those because if they clog up the DPF, the DPF will um, stop working and we'll need to burn more fuel in order to burn off the soot. So anyway, they are the four major technologies which have enabled emissions reductions. 
and their impact on the oil system.